Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. On today's show, I have another engaging guest who will also be presenting at the International Window Coverings Expo this March in Tampa, Florida. You may call me a bit biased, but I really believe the team at Window Fashion Vision has created a heck of a conference, and I am very happy to keep tempting you with guest after guest to see if you will join us in Tampa. So today I'm talking with Jana Platina Phipps, more notably known as the Trim Queen. Jana is an embellishment expert who is known for her refined vision in the use of trimmings in home furnishings and fashion. She's a designer and an agent for Classical Elements, which is a company that supplies trimmings and drapery hardware to the home furnishing vendors such as Kravit Inc. and Robert Allen. Today we talk about how through writing her blog, which she started in 2013, she found clarity, which gave rise to her new business and her new platform. It's really a platform, actually, where she blends all of her passions and talents into a single vision and focus. Jana lectures at the New York School of Interior Design. She conducts continuing education seminars and webinars. She's a regular contributor to the Window Fashion Vision and Designer Today magazines and Universal Furniture's Smart Stuff social station blog. Today, Jana and I discuss her involvement with the High Point Market Design Bloggers Tour in 2017 and the aha moment she had from listening to this podcast when Casey DiStefano was a guest, episode 153. We also talk about her involvement with With It and how the collaborations there have helped her grow her business. You know I love anyone who has an inspiration and takes action on it. Jana was inspired to blog and then inspired to do video, and both have been game changers for her career. The same is true for Sarah Danielli, the CEO of My Doma Studio. My Doma Studio is the software platform that helps you manage all aspects of your interior design firm more efficiently so you can spend more time designing. Did you know that Sarah was a working professional interior designer and she was struggling with a way to keep her projects organized and then little by little because of this struggle she developed systems and processes which she then with her husband began to create computer programs in order to carry them out and guess what a business was born. Yep, she knows exactly what you need to do to stay on top of your game because she used to have to do it herself. And Sarah and her team are always tweaking and improving My Doma Studio to make it better for you. Give it a try at www.mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business. That's www.my. D-O-M-A studio dot com slash a well-designed business. All righty. Let me introduce you to Jenna. Hey, Jenna. Thank you so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Oh, Luann, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm a big fan. Oh, me too. That's great. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually knew you from social media, and then I met you in person for the first time last year at the International Window Coverings Expo in Charlotte, because you were speaking there, and I was speaking there, and it was like, I'm like, hey, I know you from Instagram. <laughs> I had to say hello, and I went to your presentation, and I remember you were talking about niching. Mm. And I thought, oh, that is so <laughs> on my radar. Like trim is a niche. And I was doing it and I didn't even know it. So I, it was kind of validating and it was so insightful. I just loved your, your seminar. Thank you. And that's funny because when I looked, I don't know if you remember this, but as I was talking and I looked in the audience and I saw you and I was like, well, look at you. You, who niches more than you? You're building a whole empire around trim. <laughs> who knew? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. So, and so you are back speaking at the IWC again this year, right? Do, would you tell us a little bit about, I think you've got a couple of things going on this year at the IWCE. 
I do. It's super exciting. So um, last year, I really talked about the history of passementry and embellishment. And this year, I am doing a seminar called Translating Fashion into Design. And what I'm going to talk about there is, you know, we all there's kind of two camps. Like people say, I hate trends. I like trends. It's Mm -hmm. kind of all over the place. But you can't ignore that things happen in the zeitgeist and in the culture that affects design. And I just really believe that. But when it comes to taking trends from fashion, and a lot of things trickle down, but they don't translate in the same way. Like you're not going to have a couch made of feathers, for example, you know, (laughs) but you can... Not um, most of us anyway. (laughs) No, but you you can invest in a beautiful pillow that has a touch of feathers maybe coming um, on the sides or down the center that that makes you feel modern and, you know, au courant. But so it's really how to translate certain, you know, what's happening in fashion and what you can take from that as inspiration and work into decor. So that's what we're going to talk about, like what's what's worth bringing over and what's not. And also what really is going to have staying power, because there could be something that's hot now but it's not going to hang around that long. So sometimes Mm. if you work with accessories instead of your major pieces or even window treatments, um, you know, for window treatment, you could do a tie back that's, you know, patterned and super colorful. And maybe you just keep your uh, base cloth linens where they are, but you add pattern in different way. You know, if you don't, if you, you're not going to have that for the next 25 years. So there are different ways to integrate, you know, these trends or fashion elements into, um, you know, what you're fabricating in decor. I love it. And so you're spending a lot of time, really, it sounds like to me, researching and analyzing what is happening in all of these platforms, fashion and design, and kind of boiling it down and collating it. And then um, you're putting it back out. It sounds like to me what you're saying is you're identifying some of these major trends and then giving us some help and advice on ways to incorporate them in things that are lesser, um, I, I just know the word I can think of as expensive so that you're not tied to it for 10 years. You can, like you said, put it on a pillow rather than a right. sofa. Right. Yeah. It can be less of a major investment. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're willing right. to take a little more chance. It's kind of like if you have an outfit, mm. you know, you may spend a little bit more money on a bag or an accessory than you are going to on gold Palazzo pants. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same, the same, uh, concept. Okay. Um, Good. So right. that is going to be fun. And yeah, I'm kind of, I like to say, I, I went to UC Berkeley and I studied uh, social science and cultural anthropology and journalism. And so this, it's kind of funny as I've been blogging and, you know, aside from designing trims, but as these other things that I'm doing and the journalistic things that I'm doing, it's really like my college education coming to play because I really love looking at culture and why things happen, you know, whether things are coming from film or politics or what have you, you know, what, how does that come to us in our everyday life? And I'm just, I'm fascinated by that. That's interesting. Cause how many people can say that most people say everything I did in college and I'm not using it in my, my career. Right. And here you are all these years later and really merging them and melding these disciplines together into this fantastic business that you've built. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, um, you know, I think it comes from a original curiosity that just, you know, kind of blossomed in one way or another later on. And I am also, so that's on, that's on Monday. Um, and that's at 9 a.m. I think it's like the first, um, you know, one of the first seminars, mm. but then I'm also going to be in the construction zone. No, um, no. Tell, us that that. tell us about that. Tell us about it. Part. Yeah. Cause I, I, I'm aware of it, but you need to let everybody else really know the details of it. Yeah, so the construction zone is on the sh- exhibitor floor, and uh, what I'm going to be talking about, it's going to be a totally hands-on workshop, and I'm going to be teaching people how to DIY your own bespoke embellishments. So mm. it's it's kind of looking at, um, you know, whether it's making tassels or pom-poms or passementry. I mean, a lot of these things you can buy, but if there's something you're trying to match and you can't, it's, you know, it's not on the market and you can uh, make your own cording or your own welting that you can twist into passementry or into knots or uh, use as, or use cording from um, maybe something that was in the seam and take the tape off and use that into a passementry. So we're going to be hands-on and people are going to take home what they you know, what they made. It's going to be super, super fun. So I'm going to do that. Um, That's going to be Monday and Tuesday. And I'm really psyched because 
um, what I find at the IWCE is that people, people are really, it's like where with all like high design, it's where the people, the people, these people are the makers, you know, the designers mm-hmm. and the workroom people, like they know how to make stuff. So they always, that's my favorite part about coming to this show is that, you know, these people are highly skilled. It's not hot air. It's like, Mm. I I just love it. And I love to see how someone would make something differently than I would, you know, very differently. It's just like, wow, I never thought of that. Like, instead of just putting the pom pom trim on, they actually cut the pom poms off and then put them asymmetrically. Like, I'm like, whoa, you just blew my mind. Like, I just love it. So it's like my tools in somebody else's hands. And that's, that's my ultimate, you know, joy. That's That's when I get really excited. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the other things that happen in in the construction zone are the, uh, the other types of things that happens are other seminars and other workshops. And the thing is, like you said, they are being taught and run by some of the best quality workrooms in the country. And so for an interior design or a window treatment professional that attends the show, it's a, it's a chance and a place to have that understanding where when you have more understanding and you can visualize the way something is made or constructed, then it makes it a easier for you to measure for it, B to specify it and, and B to dream about the ways that you can build on things that you've seen to create something new. Do you agree? Absolutely. And you can ask questions. Like if you don't know something or like, wow, I never thought of that. Or how did you do that? It's a very open and sharing Mm. community. And I think, um, you know, that's what's so brilliant about it. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm really excited about yeah. it. I tell you too, I love, I mean, the, what you just said, it's an open and sharing community. I love the, one of the, the ways that I would often describe it is it's, it's, um, it's, it's not pretentious. It's real. It's just mm-hmm, what you mm-hmm. said. It's like you're, it, I feel like every single person that I speak with there, they're there to quote unquote work. In other yep. words, they're there, whether you're a designer or a window treatment professional, it's like, I'm here. I'm here to take these, these kick-ass seminars. I'm here to l- learn from these people on the construction zone floor. I'm here to source new vendors for fabrics or for roller shades or for whatever it may be. It's, it's like, it's, and it's fun. There's tons of fun and tons of, you know, carrying on and all that other stuff. But oh, yeah. it's really like a get it done sort of event don't do you agree with that absolutely no one's posturing yeah you know it's like no one's in their stilettos you know it's like we are in our flats our sneakers and we're running from one thing to the next and we're maximizing our time yeah yeah it's business oriented yes it really is and I love the I always say I'm a broken record I always say that the the catalog listing of the seminars is like a college education on window treatments it's like you just look at it you're like oh wait can I be in three pieces at places at one time Uh, yeah (laughs) as opposed to fluff right as opposed to fluff it's it's really intentional and it's instructional and that's what I have loved about it for you know all these years so that's awesome terrific and and so you have the translating fabric fashion to to design to decor and then you're going to be teaching the two workshops in the construction zone I love it and then I'm going to be doing Facebook live Mm -hmm. and I'll be doing a bunch of social media because I want to kind of share what, you know, what I'm learning there and, and give a shout out to this great organization. Right. Yes. We do the same too. It's a great, it's to spread the word. It's awesome. Terrific. I love it. Okay. So let's talk about your business a little bit, Jenna. So your expertise is that you design passament tree. Okay. And you do this in a a couple of different ways. You're a designer and agent for classical elements, which is a supplier to, so let clear me up on this. This is the type of firm that would supply to like a Kravit ink or something like that. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We, we supply to almost everybody. And what we do is we work with mills all over the world and we put together a seamless, um, collection. So we use the strength of each mill. So whether it's in Italy, we go to for the amazing yarns or, you know, we go to China that can do some beautiful handwork. We're coordinating all of the materials and we are putting together a collection with the expertise of each mill that we work with. Now it's a super collaborative design 
process because we're working, say, with um, someone like Robert Allen. They're, they're my account. So I work with their design team. They come to the table with a bunch of ideas. I come to the table with samples and technical stuff of what we can do. And then we we negotiate and, and figure out what's going to work best for their needs. And sometimes it's, it's size, it's cost. There's so many variables and factors. So we figure out, you know, where we want to go with this collection and then we color it, color it all. And then we make our first samples and then there are revisions. It's like a really in-depth process. Mm, it's, yes. it's, 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 um, you know, it's almost like a fashion collection or any textile collection. Yes. It's, it's really the same process, except it's just like a little bitty trim, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it reminds me so much of the process that Candace Olson described when she, when she was on the podcast last year and she described how she approaches designing a fabric collection with Kravit. And it's mm. just exactly what you said. And it ultimately does come down to decisions of, Oh, that that culminate everything from style to budget to, to materials available to, you know, outcomes. You know what I mean? So it's yep. interesting. So we probably, many, many, many of us uh, that are listening to you right now have probably specified prod, uh, products and trims through the different houses that we deal with that you were ultimately had a hand in designing, it sounds like. Absolutely. That's so yep. exciting. Yeah, it is. When I every now and then, well, a lot actually often is that I'll, you know, in market, I definitely see it all over the place. Ah. But, you know, when I go into someone's home, you know, wow. a friend of mine, I went into a, a, a gal I play tennis with and her window treatments had my trim on it, <gasps> almost fainted. It was so cool. She's like, that's yours. Oh my and I worked with Calico Corners on those with a designer. I said, that's my trim. Oh my you God. Know? I just got goosebumps. <laughs> that's a, that would make, that's such great. a thrill, right? It's kind of like hearing your, well, not that I'm a singer, but you know, like if you're a singer, you hear yourself on the radio yes. and you're like, wait, that's me. You know, a little, <laughs> little moment of, of pleasure. That's yes, cool. that's very yeah. cool. So, okay. And so now the thing is you have parlayed this great body of knowledge and expertise and skill that you have in this and launched a whole nother persona, a whole nother revenue, a whole nother avenue of creativity and business for yourself with this trim queen, right? I mean, you are the trim queen. Everybody knows you. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know, I started to um, sink in last last a couple markets ago at High Point Market where I'd be walking down an aisle and someone would say, Hey, are you the trim queen? And I'm like, Yes, I am. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, who are you? And oh my you know, well we connected on Instagram and, you know, I love that people recognize me and it's it's just so cool because ultimately as you know, we talked a little bit before is that my ultimate joy is seeing how people use my product. Mm. So that's what I really do with Trim Queen. But just to go back a little bit, I wanted to say that, um, you know, is working so much for other companies. And, and when I was working with classical, they have a fabulous, amazing product, but I had a lot more to kind of say and do creatively. Mm. And so I started to blog, it was 2013. And I went to the uh, to the With It educational conference. And there were some excellent speakers. And I was really encouraged by a couple of the members. They said, you know what, you have a really interesting point of view, like you should start blogging. I'm like, Oh, yeah, right, whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, as by the end of the conference, I thought, you know what, I, I'm going to try this. And so it took me, you know, a long time to kind of build it. And but finally, I put my first thing out there and I got such great feedback. And, you know, Luann, how it goes, like as you move through media, you start to find your voice, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I and I'm not a professional blogger, so it wasn't like I could devote so much time to it. But I did like reviewing Maison Objet and High Point Market and, you know, and then it kind of grew into some more lifestyle stuff. But the more I do it and now I really do it once a month religiously, I, um, you know, my voice is coming stronger mm. as a, as a writer and even my mission, like the more I do it, I, I think, wow, my mission is kind of formulated. And I think, you know, what I say as trim queen is that embellishing is 
a creative form of self-expression. Mm. And that's kind of what we put up um, in our studio. You know, that's what we teach our interns. And I just finished a blog post about uh, some new interns that are working with us and, and we give them our motto and our mission. And that's the first thing we teach them. And our mission is really how to show people how to use trimmings as a tool for self-expression. So mm. whether that's a designer or a consumer and, you know, that's really what our mission is. So once you have your vision and your motto and your mission set, then everything you do can really, it becomes clearer. But I could have never gotten to that had I not started to blog and really find my voice. Right. You know, what's funny in what you're saying in there, first of all, I'm just picturing what you just described as having an idea Going from the idea to, wait, you think I should blog about this, to thinking about it, to, yes, I'm going to do that. And then, like you said, the progression of finding your voice. And I love it because it's so true. And so often we sometimes by nature want to have everything figured out before we move. And the truth is I know to be true that you do have to have certain things you know, establish and laid out and goals and expectations for yourself and what you're going to do. But so much of it is just trusting that voice, that gut that says, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it to the best I can do it. And I'm going to see where it takes me. And then you do, you grow into it, right? Absolutely. And I think if you really look at, you do a little risk analysis ahead of time, Mm. You know what? There was really nothing for me to lose. I mean, maybe I could embarrass myself. <laughs> right. Seriously, right. you know, there's no one dying on the operating table. You know, it's the blog the, post the stunk. <laughs> yeah. So there wasn't much risk involved, and then once you kind of analyze that, then it gives you more confidence, and then you really have to listen. Mm-hmm. You know, you listen to the feedback, and you can, you know, I, I, I like to hear what people have to say, and I have a group of, of business people that I consider, you know, my mentors or advisors. So that first post I did send to about five friends Mm. in the industry and ask for their feedback. And I listened and I switched some things around. And Stephanie Lauder is with Rare Bird Creative and she helped me design my logo. She's a fellow with it member. And so I passed things by, I passed the first blog by her and Leslie Carruthers and Mm. Uh, Leslie Newby from Work the Brand, and I really got their feedback before I put it out into the world. So, um, you know, you got to use your network. Mm -hmm. And they were honest, and I was just open to it because it wasn't something that I was an expert at yet. Well, it's nice. It's nice that you felt uh, it's it, two things are nice. Number one, that you felt comfortable that you could reach out to colleagues and ask them to take a half hour or so to read it and give you some feedback or whatever. And it's also really smart on your part to be willing to do that and to understand that that is a powerful thing to get the feedback of people who are willing to share an honest opinion in your best interest. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think it's also interesting because it's happened too, you know, in my trajectory that some things were, um, okay, I'm telling you this as a friend or mentor, but then also being clear when that really crosses the line and you get into coaching or paid consulting, Mm -hmm. you know, and that can happen too, which is totally cool. You just have to be upfront and clear about it. And um, I think both parties feel better about that. So that's something to always be clear about. That's interesting. Have you had that happen either? I have. So so on the end where you were asking advice and the person had to say to you gently, Jana, this is awesome, but this is this is what I do for a living. You have to pay for this or you had it. Yes. Are, OK. <laughs> yes. And but it's been opposite now. I mean, yes, now it's right. come now back it's to me way, where right. people are asking me, you know, I want to do some social media strategy. I want to do this. And I'll say, I'm happy to give you an hour. Um, beyond that, then we need to talk about some kind of arrangement, Mm -hmm. you know, and people respect that everybody Mm -hmm. wants to be paid for their expertise. So Mm -hmm. I think, um, just being upfront about it is Mm -hmm. important. Well, and it's nice that you brought that up because it is a, it is a, it is a, a, it's a scary little line to, to run down. But the thing that I often say is as interior designers, who understands that better? I mean, isn't that what scope creep is called? (laughs) You know, I mean, it's like if you, you know, you have a client that's asking you're in the middle of doing room a and the client just says oh room b i thought i would put this you know sofa in what do you think great 
I like it. It's good. But then next thing, there's 20 questions about room B, yep. right? Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's very nice of you to point that out because um, it is, you know, these women that you mentioned are all, I mean, I'm familiar with two or three of the names that you mentioned, and they are just really leaders in the industry and, and are very knowledgeable and valuable coaches. And so, and now, like you said, you're in that position as well. So that's awesome. Yeah, yep. it's 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 and it's funny because just last week I did a show on um, with Cheryl Luckett, who is the principal of Dwell by Cheryl, and her and Laura Thurman. Nope, I'm making a mistake. Her and her and Rashida Gray of Gray Space okay. Interiors have a mentor mentee relationship, and then Cheryl has one the other way with Lucy Stolson. And we did mm-hmm. discuss the ins and outs of the etiquette of that relationship. Right, so, interesting. Okay. Well, another thing that I do just to throw this out there is is do I have a peer mentoring group? Mm. So this is a group that. Um, is more peer oriented, even Mm -hmm. though we have different strengths. Mm -hmm. So it's, we operate, you know, we set the parameters. So we do a Google hangout Mm -hmm. once a month and there are five of us. I also have another one that I work with on a biweekly basis. Um, and it's, it works for both of us Mm because we're both allotted you know, half an hour and then we have feedback and then the other person goes and it's so helpful Mm. because, you know, we all have information that to share and insight that there's just no way you could have on your own or even within your team Mm -hmm. because we're in different segments of the business. So it's just, I, I, I love this industry because of that. But peer mentoring to me is, is, you know, also super valuable as is I've had three coaches in my life that Mm -hmm. I've paid for because I was in a big transition and I needed some handholding that was beyond peer mentoring. I Mm -hmm. needed some real coaching. So I've, I've done it all, Luann. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I'll tell you what, it's evidenced by the body of work. When I, you know, went through your introduction and all of the things that you are out there accomplishing, I'm not one bit surprised. I mean, you're very intentional and you're very, you know, focused, it sounds like. And so tell me just a little bit about that, about moving this, this trim queen entity into a viable business for you. So you are, I mean, you've been part of design bloggers tours and style, you know, st- you know, what are those called? Style spotter things. And all yeah. That. Yeah. Not style spotters, but I have been design bloggers tour twice okay. last year. Okay. And, uh, which was, Oh, I wanted to say something about that. So, um, I applied for that and I thought, oh, no way in hell am I going to get it Mm -hmm. because it's, you know, all these really famous people. And then I got this letter and I was accepted and I could not believe it. I mean, I was jumping for joy because it was like (laughs) the first sponsored event where I was acknowledged as an influencer. It hadn't really happened before that. So I, I thought, wow, this is some really great feedback, but, um, on the other side of the coin, I'm with nine other bloggers. I'm number 10. And I was so the lowest man on the totem pole. I mean, they would never say that. But I was huh? looking at the numbers and how many followers and I'm like, Oh, my gosh, like, oh. I don't even compare to these people. So I happened to be going on a road trip, I was going to work with Calico Corners. And they're in Pennsylvania, about three hours away from me. And I had your podcast on So when I travel, <laughs> I listen to podcasts. And you were on with Casey DeStef- uh, DeStefano. Yep. De- yep. Right? Casey DeStefano. De yep. yep. DeStefano. Yep. Uh, what it, what it, what is it, what is her business called? Women who have balls in the air. Women with balls in the air. With yeah, that's her podcast. Air. And she was, you're talking about when it. she was on my podcast. You're saying, or you were so listening to was, hers? No, okay. she was on your podcast, okay. <laughs> and she was talking about the power of video, oh. and it really spoke to me. And I hadn't done a lot of video before then, and you know, it was kind of all this happening at the same time. I thought, you know what? How am I going to separate myself from these other bloggers? And if I did video, no one else is going to do video coverage. Isn't that something? And I did it. And it was painful. And it was amazing. (laughs) And I hired an editor. I did some myself. And it was a huge learning curve. And when I kind of went over my 2017 of, of what brought me the most pain and what brought me the most happiness, like that was it. Doing video 
gave me both. And so I want to credit you and Casey for that, Isn't that great something? advice. And then I just posted a blog um, uh, earlier, you know, in January, and I did this video and it was so awesome. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes I can handle it myself. Now, my daughter is a 14 year old. She did a little bit of editing for me. So it kind of <laughs> depends whether I hire out for it or right. whether I do it myself. It depends, you know, what the subject matter is. But um, I love it. And I feel like doing video is like designing or cooking because you have all the elements and you have to assemble them. That's and you're amazing. making all these choices, whether it's I, I love searching for the music, like, you know, you have the music and then you have <laughs> all your stills and then you have the actual video. And it's just another form of design. It's a, yeah, just, you're really creating another outlet there. Well, and I, it's funny because as you're telling the story, I'm remembering, I actually think I remember. So we're going back to high point in what, fall of 2017? I mean, fall of 2016 or spring of 2017, which was when you were the design It blog. was spring of spring. I did spring and fall of 2017. So that okay. was spring. It spring. was spring was the first time yeah. you did. Yes, because we had just met at IWCE and then that happened. And I remembered in one of the videos you did like either did a shout out or did a caption and you said because I heard about doing this on your podcast that's you know? right <laughs> yeah I think I tweeted out to you yes you did something and I was like yeah. whoa <laughs> that's very cool well I mean the thing is it's the lessons that the people have been telling us on the last year and a half of the podcast of the different ways to put yourself out there and to and like we say to niche yourself so not only are you already extremely niche as the trim queen but when you looked at that platform platform of nine other super bloggers you really that's what I love about your business Jenna it's intentional you just you didn't just like do your happy dance and then go on the tour and think okay the rest will happen that you sat right. and you gave it some thought and said hmm what else am I going to do here? What, how else can I tweak this and to kind of, like you said, make a little name for myself here? And that's so brilliant on your part to latch on to something like that. And you're awesome. great at it. You're very, you're very charismatic on, on video and audio. You're just, you're, you're perfect for it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really, you I are. super enjoy it. Yeah, that's really cool. Do. And it comes through. And that's the other thing. You have to pick something that you'll like. I mean, here you have a journalist background. And so therefore the blogging is not like this crazy stretch and and, and and that doesn't mean that it's not a lot of work and it doesn't take a sure. lot of time to do, but you have some skill sets there. As you said, you bring it from your college education. And then, of course, you know, you really enjoy this. And if you, we say this too on the show all the time, you know, there's 9,000 different things that you could do to move the needle on your business, but you got to pick the ones that feel good for you because you can't yeah, you do, do it. You know, you can't jump in two feet if it doesn't feel right. If somebody just says do video, that's not enough, right? No, you won't have the energy for it. You've got yeah. to find, you know, really how it applies to you and how you can make it your own, mm -hmm. you know, have mm -hmm. find again, finding your voice mm -hmm. in, on some level. Right. And the, and I would say that that applies to being an interior designer as well. Would you, Jenna, where if oh, somebody... Oh, absolutely. Right. So if they're starting yeah. their business out and they're thinking, oh my God, I've heard on the podcast a thousand times, what's my you? Fred Burns wants to know what my you is and what's my niche for this one tells me what, what's my niche. What's your why? Right. What's your why? That's the thing that I always mm -hmm. say. What's your why? And so the right. thing is, sometimes you don't always know them with clarity. You have no. to have a germ of something, right? But right. you don't have to wait until you have complete clarity to launch your design firm or to launch whatever it is that you're doing because a lot of it comes in the creative process of developing it. You agree? And it's an incredible process because you can't know until you get into it and then things reveal themselves to you. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to real reveal themselves if you're just sitting in your office on the computer searching Pinterest. You know, you have to have <laughs> you have to be digging into a project and see where the pitfalls are, pitfalls are, what is very um, has ease and how you solve problems. There are so many things that come up in real life in projects that you wouldn't otherwise know. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's, there's no way for you to know. Right. And I, I did want to point out, so one of the things that has helped me this year was um, – I got one of those journals called Daily Greatness. Mm. Do you know those journals? And this is a business edition. Oh. So it's been really interesting um, to 
you know, put what's in my head, you know, on paper. And a lot of the questions and uh, that this journal is asking, I don't even know yet. You know, I'll put a big question mark on there, but but at least it has me thinking and going in a direction. And Interesting. What so I instead love, of daily gratitude, it's daily greatness. It's a different it's prompt. It's daily greatness. It's a different prompt, but you do have gratitude in there. So per each day, the author will have a question. What are you grateful for today? Mm-hmm. What did you do really well? Um, how many clients new clients did you get this week? Uh, what? How much new business did you do? So there's a lot of financial mm. prompts here, which I really like because, you know, I, I could easily just create content all day, every day, <laughs> you know, but I have to hustle in my business and find new business. And, you know, that's always not my forte. So it's really helping me focus and putting um, the financials first and I think that's really important for this I love it. upcoming year. Yeah, I love it. That's great. That reminds me, too, of our other, other buddy that's going to be at the IWCE is, is Michelle Williams, the certified, oh, oh my yeah. God, <laughs> Scarlet, Scarlet Red. Red right? <laughs> oh, my God. Don't you, I mean, when you, when any, any, anybody ever says to me something that connects with making sure that your, you know, financials are in order, there's two people that run through my mind, my husband, Vin, and Michelle Williams. <laughs> Great. Great. You know, because those, you know, she just is so good at that too. And she's accessible at the show, which I love. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I want to say is I know that you are planning this, the Trim Queen Maker Tour in Venice, Italy. Tell us about that. Yes. Is that open still to the public oh, or are we just going to make everybody like, like, uh oh, it's too late? No, no. This is, is still uh, a bit of work in progress. Okay. So it is, um, I am planning for spring of, of next year. I had to push it off a little bit because okay. I, I had an, some unexpected travel that I have to do um, end of this year. But it really is. I went to – so I don't know if you know this, but I, I speak Italian. I work mm. with an Italian mill. I'm mm. Italian-American, and I went to school my junior year at Berkeley in Venice, at the University of Venice. Oh. So I'm very familiar with the city and um, – I have friends who still live there. When I went there last spring, I brought my daughter with me and I had some connections. And just by chance, you know, I was posting video. We went and worked with a mask maker, with a jewelry designer. We went to glass blowers. We really went to work with the artisans, like in a workshop format. And I was posting these pictures and, you know, I got 100 people coming back at me. That's amazing. Can I come? And so I thought, you know what, I would love to bring people and kind of give them an insider view here of, of life here. It's not, it's not a touristic view, you know, it's very insider. And we even worked with a stationary um, printer and, oh gosh, it was just, it was just amazing. So it's something that I want to share with people. And I think it's really the future of travel, Mm. like with this educational hands-on travel. It's kind of like um, in Italian, they say agroturismo, like agro-tourism. So it's kind of like going to farms and mm. staying on farms and then Right, and the cooking have... tours and stuff exactly. that people do, right? Yes. So it's similar to that, but it's more, I call it maker, maker mm. tourism. So I'm really excited about that. I'm still building some of the... Uh, you know, some of the back end stuff and the costs and all that. But there is a place on my website to sign up for um, alerts on that. And I'll have a date posted soon. And, you know, I have a lot of experience with it because I've been doing the With It design tour for 10 years. I've been mm, co-chairing that. City, with, right? Yeah, with Betty Lynn Eller, who mm. is just incredible. So we've, we're in our 10th year and we sold out last year and it's coming up in May. Um, and we're limited to 25 people and we really do a three day tour of New York city going to see artisans. We have docent tours at museums. We have private dinners, book signings. It's really, you know, the whole insider thing. I just, I love it. I want access, Mm. you know, and I'll pay for that access because I don't want to be 
a outside tourist looking scene. Outside in, right? Yeah, I don't want to be a tourist seeing the glossy stuff. I want right. to see the nitty gritty that right. really has a lot of value. So, yeah, stay tuned. Make her tourist. <laughs> Venice Very edition. Very exciting. <laughs> well, it's right up the alley of so many creatives and so many interior designers that, you know, it's sort of like what we were saying about the construction zone at the IWCE. <laughs> it's like getting your hands on it and really asking the questions of the people who are the ones that create and make these things. And so the same as going to a print shop and to a mask maker and all of these things that you're doing. It's really that uh, front row seat to really understanding what goes into the craft and the art of what that artisan that you're meeting is doing as opposed to just, like you said, walking into the shop, looking around and going, I'll take two masks and thanks and put them in a box. <laughs> No, exactly. You it, Very nice. and then you get to you get to put your stamp on it. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. also. So if you're making something and you're taking it home with you, it has right. a totally different meaning exactly. than if you're just buying something off the shelf. And then we also, I don't know if you saw, but I did a maker tourism um, with Kim Chagnon from Kim's Upholstery. We buddied up and took. Um, a dozen people through the garment district, New York, New York oh. City's garment district. And we're going to do a little bit more of that. We have something coming up with the uh, WCA out of Connecticut in May. So you I, are I really. so busy. Well, you know, that's, that's something I love to do. I, it's all people that I'm connected to. So I'm just sharing and turning people on to new sources. I just, like I said, I just, I want people to make it their own, yeah. you know, cause they're going to do different things with the flower guy than I would. And right. I love seeing how they incorporate these, these tools. That's amazing. So are some of these things, Jenna, available for people to find out about on your website? Like when you do things through with it, are, are they on your website or do they have to go? How you know in other words somebody listening? Yeah, like, oh, I want to know about true. these things. Yeah, with it, uh, the with it event is on with its website. Okay. Um, do you have to be the, a member of with it to do these? You do things? not have to. Okay. You have a little. You pay a little bit more Different. of a premium. Uh-huh. Okay. But I would run not walk to that because okay. I think we're up to seven spaces left. Okay. That that thing will sell out. But okay. that is super awesome. And then the WCAA is through Connecticut. But you know what? I'll put some information on my website. I have an events page. Yes. On my website. So I'll, I'll click, I'll do some click throughs. I know I have the IWCE on there. Right. Um, okay. And then, you know, that's I'll, terrific. I'll connect. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, you're a bundle of energy. We could go for another hour, but you know, as, as a very busy person, I know you have a deadline for this. So, <laughs> um, yes. but I appreciate so much that you came and on the, sh- came on the show and shared your information. And, um, it, seriously, it's worth the price of admission for at IWCE to meet Jenna. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, well, I hope anybody that I don't know will introduce themselves. That's and if right. you're wearing trim, definitely show it to me because I'll do a style wrap up for sure. Well, and that's and I just the great that thing show. about you that you always are dressed in some sort of trim so that if you're not sure if it's Jenna, it's her. That's true. <laughs> I love it. It's so <laughs> some of the things that you have are so creative. It's amazing. You know, oh, thank you. The Lillian. outfits that I've seen you in. So, but yeah, so, you know, join us down in uh, Tampa this March, everybody. Jenna will be there and don't forget the guys at Madcap Cottage will be there as well. I'll be there. Madeline McRae, Michelle Williams, Deb Barrett, you know, it's a big happy gang going down there this year right it is and i'm going to be at so many seminars it's you know i'll be on the floor and the seminars oh and i did want to say that there's going to be a new fabric pavilion oh at... that's right we didn't even tell everybody yes <laughs> we're ahead, talking about, about that it. so yeah. um the international textile association which i'm a board member and we put on showtime twice a year we have uh, we are going to have a pavilion of fabrics and distributors at IWCE this year. So That's I think insane. there'll be between ten or fifteen exhibitors. So for all the the um, textile, you know, Loving junkies, designers. like you're yeah. gonna, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get the soft stuff at that pavilion. So I think that's, that's nice. Gonna that's be a, a great huge addition. That's a great addition to the show this year because there is a lot of resources for hard window treatments and also for workrooms. But mm-hmm. that's nice to know that you've got that textile pavilion coming up, and you know we'll have that. That's awesome. That's a great addition. Yeah, can't wait. Well done, Jenna. Well done. <laughs> oh, hi. Connecting the dots. That's man. it. That's it. Well, yeah. I can't thank you enough. I really do appreciate your time and I, I'm looking forward to seeing you in a couple of that's like six weeks away. Thank you I so know. much. So excited. Thanks, Luann. Thanks for having me. All right.
righty. I'm going to share my two biggest takeaways from this episode with Jana. Let's see if they compare to yours. The first is know your mission, know your motto, know your vision for your company, know what it is that you're doing each day and why you do it. And the second is don't wait for perfect. So let's talk about the first one. If you've ever heard my keynote speech, excellence is a decision, you know how important I believe it is to establish your company mission and your core values. These are two things that I am absolutely certain are critical to your success as a business owner. And today we heard Jana express the same thing. We heard her say as she discovered these things and became cleaner on them, her business took off. The thing about knowing these things is, and why they're so important, is that when you know your mission with clarity. It helps you with every single decision you face in a week, a month, a year. It gives you the ability to assess choices and move on from them rather than spin your wheels in doubt and wonder. Okay. As an example, I'll share with you. I was invited to speak at a podcast conference that's taking place this month, February, 2018. And the truth is I was absolutely thrilled. I love the organizers. Uh, I love the other podcasters that are going. They're all people that I respect and I want to spend time with. But the thing is, when I evaluated evaluated everything on my plate, I had to face that if I was really going to go there, it was for two reasons. And one was the ego boost to be on a stage with fellow podcasters that I look up to. And the second would be to spend time with people that I've come to love and respect in the podcast industry, like Carol Cox, the host of Speaking Your Brand, and Katie Kremitzos, the host of Biz Women Rock Podcast, and Jessica Rhodes, the host of Rock the Podcast Podcast, because I like these women and I want to hang out with them. But I balanced it. I, I started to balance it against my mission of running Window Works with my husband and Billy and running this podcast and the mastermind group that I've got going on, my one on one coaching clients. And the thing is, I couldn't honestly say it would move the needle in these areas. It really was the yen to be on the stage with these other podcasters and to hang out with these other women that I've come to like and to know and respect. So I very reluctantly decline. But the thing is, is that once I did, I knew it was the right decision for my business. And the thing is that I had a moment where I wondered what these women would think and wondered if they would be offended. But the truth is that they're all smart business women, And they know that as business owners, you can't chase every shiny object and expect to still be productive. And so that's what I'm saying. Clarity like this comes from knowing what your focus is, from defining it and honoring it with everything you do. So I want you to think about that with your interior design business. When you are faced with decisions, should you do this or should you do that? Just say to yourself, what's my mission? So should you take a one bathroom project if your mission is to do full you know, floors or something? Should you take paint selection project if your mission is to only do full rooms? So the thing is that no one can decide for you what your mission is. And there's no right or wrong mission, okay? It, there's no judgment in any of it. It's just be clear for you. Maybe your mission right now is to take every single project you can in order to be busy. That's okay. That's a mission. It can change. It can evolve. Or maybe you've evolved from that and you're making your mission no full on projects only. Okay. So you get what I'm saying? Just get clear because it helps you just make decisions. All right. The second takeaway is don't wait to be perfect. Don't wait for perfect. Jenna explained how she was a little unsure when she started to blog. She wasn't sure really how to do it. She wasn't sure what she would say, but it didn't stop her. She didn't tell herself, oh, I'm not ready. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to you know, make it happen. No, she leapt into it. She wrote the blog. Now, she did ask for help. She reached out for feedback. She tweaked things and she did everything possible to make it the best of her ability at that time. And that's the key right there. She knows that what she created back in the day is distinctly different from what she puts out now, that what she creates now is leaps and bounds better than her first attempts at blogging. But you do everything 
you do your best work every time with each effort, okay? Because that's how you improve and that's how you gain that clarity as she discussed. So whether it's the establishing bookkeeping processes for your firm, maybe this is a particularly, you know, painful struggle for you. So don't put it off. Don't say, well, I don't know how to be an excellent bookkeeper and I'm the only one here, chief cook and bottle washer. So the heck with it. I'm not going to do my books. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Get it together. Do the best you can. Look for help. Get feedback. Do it better the next time. Get it going, okay? Maybe it's learning to accurately track your hours so that you can price your projects profitably. Whether Maybe it's whether you should be jumping into blogging or creating video for your business. The point is, do your best, get feedback, do it again, and move on. But do. Don't just intend, all right? Now, I have so far introduced you to Madeline McRae, a sales and gold stra- a goal strategist and business coach, to Jason Oliver Nixon and John Lucky of Madcap Cottage, and now Jenna Platina Phipps. You already know Deb Barrett and Michelle Williams from episodes 53, 137, and 180. So you tell me, in addition to this insanely talented lineup of speakers, we also have the construction zone, the fabric pavilion, and the exhibit floor. Have I convinced you yet to get yourself to Tampa this March to the International Window Coverings Expo? I sure hope I have. Join us and be sure to introduce yourself to me. I'll be doing a super Super session on mastering the art of the high ticket sale. And you know, that's my sweet spot. I love to talk about the sales process. So to find out more about the International Window Coverings Expo, please go to www.iwce-vision.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate that you spend your time listening to the show, but what would really make me happy is to know that you're not only taking notes, but that you are taking action. I want you to decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.